is. Just let somebody know you're here today. Praise the Lord. We're going to have church today. I just feel it in my bones today. Uh, God bless you. We, we love work, getting together. Uh, in the past five years, I have done some outreaches that have been outreach on top of outreach, and I'm trying to reach people. But one thing the Lord has changed inside of me is I like to, I'm learning to like to reach inside. Uh, and I'll use the example that the Lord put in my spirit uh, to this very week when we was talking about that parade float that the kids will be on uh, or, or whoever's on it is, is this right here, Zebra, is that these children, and I've been, and I say 10, 11 years old as children, they will not remember everybody they threw candy to, but they will remember everybody they threw candy with. What I'm saying is, is I go in the grocery store with everybody in the community, but I'm, I'm grateful to do life with you in this building today. Not just here, but on a parade float, at a women's luncheon somewhere, wherever y'all get together, wherever you can get together as the body, I invite you to. Three, four, five, ten, fifteen of y'all get somewhere and just do life together. Uh, one thing I did fill out this week that didn't make the announcements, but it's coming. I just feel like I got to jump out of here just to balance the scales, Zeb. Is this right here? We're going to have a men's breakfast. I thought, come on, guys, help me. The, the ladies were excited right there. Good. Yeah, so when I start mentioning menus in a minute. Y'all might get a little bit louder. But anyway, we're going to cook. We're going to have a good time. Uh, we, got, we got that coming. That's going to be December the 4th, opening day of dog season. I just threw that out there. I don't know if anybody was going to say it or not. But uh, anyway, that's a, that's a joke. Uh, a, lot, a lot of guys used to hunt. Let me give you an inside story. The first year I was here, Man, it was August. We come through the summer. We was rocking and rolling. God was doing it. This place was full. We done had the flood. Man, look, December come. Shoo. Oh, you could have shot a shotgun down through here. It wouldn't hit nobody. I said, what in the world's going on? And somebody said, it's the opening day of deer season in Mississippi. I had reached all the hunters, but the hunters were still going hunting. They said they'd be back in February, I guess. I don't know. But I'm, I'm glad to know that, that we, we reach a broad range of people. Uh, I'm glad there's some hunters in the building. There's, fish, there's business owners. There's a broad range of people, and I'm grateful because that's what the body of Christ looks like. Another thing that's included in the body of Christ is givers. If you're a giver, won't you stand on your feet today? Just go ahead. and You're a giver. You are a giver. I'm fixing to bless whatever you have to bring. I'm fixing to bless the tithe as the, the attendants come, the ushers come. If you have it, if the Lord's put it in your hands, I dare you to release some back to him. Bless him with what he's blessed you with. Bless him with what he's blessed you with. As the Lord moves on your heart, would you give? Look, I can tell you, we made it through the COVID. We made it through the storm. The elders would come and say, tithe was only so much today, Pastor, but so-and-so gave a big check. And, and, and I'd say, hey, that's what we needed. And they'd say, well, it was only this much, but two or three people gave this way. And every Sunday, I got to see God meet the need and look and say, you know what? It, even when we couldn't get together in 100, when we couldn't get together in 75, 80 in group, maybe there was 40, 20, sometimes no folk here. It always come through. God always made a way uh, to do what we needed to do here at the new. And I want to tell you thank you because some of you were some of those checks, those Sundays that were big givers. Some of you were the constant givers. Some of you were just steady as it goes. And that's fine because all givers are needed in the body of Christ. It takes all of us to make it happen and to do life. So I want to tell you thank you for being obedient today. Hold your tithe before the Lord. Father, I thank you right now as we hold it in our hands. God, as we declare it, it is a blessing from you. God, we release it into your kingdom. God, we release it in your kingdom to accomplish what you have sent it to do, God. Let, let the seed grow. Let the tithe break every curse. God, I pray right now that we are obedient, God, for obedience is better than sacrifice, and we love that you are our sacrifice in that we are obedient, God, as we release to you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You can release your seed, and then you can release your children.
All right, get acquainted with that sucker next to you. Go and get their name. Tell them if you're going to be quiet on this road, you're on the wrong road. We're going to make some noise here. I need somebody just going to make up in your mind right now you're going to be the worship leader for your road. If the Lord says something, you're going to make some noise. If nobody else on your road does it, you're going to do it on your road. Can I, can I get one person on each road? Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, I got one. All right. That's good. Let's go. Now I'll tell you we're going to be coming out of Revelations. <laughs> Hey, here we go. Here we go. It's good to be in this house today. I'm grateful for all of you. Um, I want to I wanna say a special thanks for uh, the Stutzner brothers in the back. I was here studying the other day, and those brothers knocked on the door, and I looked, and uh, there they were. We were standing. I said, how can I help you, gentlemen? They said, we're looking for a home, church. We just wanted if we'd come by here. I said, you come by here. You sure know come by here. Thank you, fellas, for coming. All, all of our guests, but those were the ones that just, and I'll tell you what really did it is, uh, one, I think Brother Paul looked at me, and he said, well, Pastor, I'm going to tell you right now, something don't, uh, if something don't uh, slip, break, or come loose, we're going to be here at 10 o'clock uh, Sunday morning. I'm grateful that he kept his word and he was here. However you got to get here, there you are in a home that has people from all walks of life, and we welcome every walk of life from here. Because this is what it, this is what it looks like. Um, all roads don't lead to heaven. But if your road has been broken, bruised, battered, twisted, lost, turned around the wrong side of the mountain, left turn when you're supposed to take a right turn, as long as it comes back to Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is our goal here, is not to go back and fix your road, but just steer your road toward Christ, for he is our way. He is the truth. He is the life. And that's what we serve here is Jesus Christ. So it's a blessing to be here before of you. Um, I'm just going to tell you, we, we, we're going to be, that clock ain't right. That's good. Uh, that, that's not, so anyway, we got a lot going on this morning. I'll just go on and tell you, um, this is what we do. We are a family here. Um, we got a couple going to get married before we leave here today. Yay. Yeah. All the ladies said yay. <laughs> Gentlemen. I got the flow of this service. I'm, I got this all together. It's going to be all right. It's going to be special, but I'm not going to have you. Ain't nobody going to be decorating with flowers and throwing rice here in a minute. But we, you know what? Sometimes marriages get to be a lot bigger than what sometimes we, we ought to be. A lot of young couples start out in debt because they want to impress all their friends and this, that, and the other. And before you know it, they can't hardly pay the light bill because they're still paying for the wedding that's on the rocks. Because of the debil that's come. Anyway, that's a whole, whole other thing right there. But wisdom says, hey, you know what? A wedding is this. It's coming together in covenant before God and witnesses. And that's what a marriage is, is that I have swore to God I'm going to stay with you the rest of my life. And I told God and I told these people. So we're going to have it here today before we get out of here. We're going to give you a chance to get saved and we're going to give them a chance to get married. Is that all right? Okay. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'll let you guess. with. All oh, that'll come here in just a little while. So, you know, got to keep a little suspense in the atmosphere, a little suspense there. If you want to turn to your word, um, the last book of the Bible, the first chapter of that book, Revelations, a lot of pastors will stay away from it, and I, for one, have been one of those who did stay away with it because the biggest way to start an argument is open to the book of Revelations. Everybody's got their own timeline. Everybody wants to justify what's going to happen and when it's going to happen and what dragon's going to win and who's on what horse and... All that kind of stuff. I just want to teach the Word of God today. Would that be all right? I just want to say a special thanks. I see some young people in the atmosphere today in the, in the, in the, the, in the sanctuary, and I want to tell you thank you for being here. Uh, church is not a thing for old people. It's a ch church is a thing for all generations, and we welcome you. Can, can you help me? If you're under the age of 20, I'd like to just say thank you for coming and still in the room. Can the elders help me? You lived all your life for these young people in the room right here. You prayed for these people here. So if you're under the age of 20, I want to tell you thank you. Under the age of 30, I'll just go on and tell you thank you as well. You're younger than me. And that's kind of what we do is we, we keep the faith and we pray through until we get young people to catch and say, look, this thing they're holding on to is solid. That something's kept them. And that's all our faith is, is what keeps us and keeps us in peace. And eternity comes. And after death, we'll know how it all goes. But right now in life, it's good to be hooked up with a church family. It's good to be hooked up with each other. We can encourage each other. Um, I'll get to reading the Word of God in a minute. But I want to set the stage, kind of a new series here for the, the month of November. Is No Flight November. Can you say that? No Flight November. 
Uh, that, that's kind of a catchy, I guess. I hope it catches. Uh, here's the deal as we, as we looked at it. I believe we are in a time for the Christians to rise up, for the people of faith to rise up and trust in the power of our God. We have laid down and let a lot get away from us, but it's time for us to stand up. And we might not fight every devil that turns around and looks at us and every, every state organization that shows up. And every time we see something on the, I'm not going to the state capitol in March, but I can tell you this. In the spirit, we have the authority that is above every authority. We have the power. He said he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And we have that authority. And we need to stand up in our spiritual act and walk and take that authority and take back what the Lord has given us um, and and but so I wanted to kind of capitalize I'm not a real big war kind of person to be honest with you I think the battle is already won we just got to step on the battlefield having said that you can't ever walk in back victory until you step on the battlefield if you'll just step there Ephesians says put on the whole armor of God do all of this and stand there and know that I got you back Stand there and know that I can be on the battlefield with you. But a lot of times Christians either want to fight all the time and they never focus on the presence of God or we just sit back and nonchalantly let things go by. But I think we are called to victory and the only way to have victory is to walk upon the battlefield. Bloody church, I think we called it in October. <laughs> I don't know if that's professional or not, but it is the new way. It is the new way. So, uh, but no flight in November derives out of such things as uh, we're just reminded even this morning, the Lord kind of capitalized on it. You remember our Native American brothers? If you could envision the vision that I had while, while I asked the Lord, I said, you know, what's this got to do with it? And, you know, those Indians wasn't quite dressed like those pilgrims. I don't know about you, but when they gave me the coloring sheet in the fourth grade, I was glad to get it. I didn't have to do anything else. I didn't like a word search. Just let me color. Do stuff. Just let me do that. But anyway, you colored the Indians a little different than you did the pilgrims. And here it was. The pilgrims don't come in their house. They'll come up in there uh, in their territory, on their land. This was Native Americans. Oh, if, if your skin's as light as mine or lighter, we invaded their territory. Just go on and say that, and I'm not going to give you a history lesson, but I admire those Native Americans for they didn't mind coming to the table. They didn't come with a sword. They didn't come to kill nobody, they didn't, but they wasn't leaving either. Come on, somebody ought to help me right here. I understand it was a peaceful time of Thanksgiving and everybody come together, but the fact of the matter, if you was on the Indian side of the table, you was having to give up some land to somebody who didn't rightfully have it, and they come and took it from you. And I think them being at the table, the turkey was good, but Jack... You're sitting on my land right now. I think they come to say, I'm going to be here. I'm going to get me a piece of this before I go. And I think we as Christians, I'm going to say, I know as the body of Christ, we have to learn to stand up. We don't have to be full of hatred. We don't have to be ready to kill. We didn't come to steal or destroy. But we did come to defend what was ours. If you're going to throw a dinner at my place, I'm going to sit at the table. And so no flight in November comes from such matters as that right there, is that the enemy is always looking to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And so if you're not living life abundantly, I invite you to sit at the table and let's see what's going to happen here. It's no flight in November. No flight in November. I studied the body responds to flight and fight in the same manner. Oh, preacher, what you talking about? Don't worry about it. The biology ain't going to get deep. I promise you I'm not going to get deep with science lessons. But we respond due to hormones that uh, trigger our adrenaline glands to be able to respond both to fight and flight in the same manner. You seen that little guy win the fight and you didn't think he was going to win it? You seen him smoke that big rascal and just lay him out? That comes from adrenaline. His body was responding. He was being challenged. His body responded in the flesh with adrenaline that caused him to do things that he wasn't ready to do. You remember the little joke when the two guys was running from the bear and they said, uh, joke, uh, you, you, you ain't faster than the bear. He said, I don't have to be faster than the bear. I just need to be faster than, than you. I said that to say this, is that look at me, I don't move very fast, I'm not very athletic, but you know when the bear's after me, there's, a, there's hormones that start taking over, there's adrenaline, that, and even, even when I'm in flight, 
My body consists, so I can fight hard or I can run fast, whichever one you want to do. And I want to encourage you in the month of November, why don't we stand at the wiles of the enemy? Why don't we look him square in the eyes and instead of taking all our energy and run off and just let him know this is no flight November and I come to stand mine and for me and mine, I'm going to stand up. Can somebody join me today? Well, let's go on and get in the word. Let's go on and get in the word today. Before you write me all cutting up about this, I ain't even got in the Bible. <clears throat> Revelations. This is John. This is John writing the book of Revelations in chapter 1. He was opening up and he was really laying us a foundation for where he was and where we were going here in the first couple of chapters. We get in a lot of deeper stuff later, but if you don't understand the first couple of chapters, you will not be ready for the next 19 or 20 chapters that follow behind it. So let's go to Revelations chapter 1. We'll start in verse 9. He said, and I, John, both your brother and your companion, in tribulation and the kingdom of patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Why was he there? For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse 10 says, and I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Skip down to verse 19 is where we'll really teach from today as that foundation is laid. Verse 19, the Lord was instructing John to do this, to write the things which you have seen, the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. Father, I pray you have blessed the reading and the hearing of the word today, that you would let it plant, you would let it be planted and grow like seed with great potential. Would you use the word of God in the hearts of your people today? Lord, let me just be a messenger speaking to your people. God, let me be an angel that would hear from you, that would speak to them in the name of Jesus. May their hearts grow. Grow with anticipation, God, and may they grow with strength that they no longer run from the wiles of the enemy, but that we stand there as no flight November and face the wiles of the enemy by the power of the blood in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Well, let's get on into it. Here we got John, John on the island of Patmos. John was one of the disciples, one of the beloved disciples. John was the only disciple who passed or died because of natural causes. Everybody else was a martyr. Uh, there were several who were beheaded. Peter himself was hung on a cross, and he told them, don't hang me like Christ, but hang me upside down because I'm not worthy to be as he was. So a lot of them died due to martyrs tied to the stake and such as, as that. But here John is. They tried, but they couldn't get John because John still had potential inside of him. He's on the Isle of Patmos now, I told you last week, because the king at the time had taken John and dipped him in a vat of boiling oil and had deep fried the brother, had cooked him until the skin had come off from him, put him on the Isle of Patmos where there was no inhabitation, but they put him out there so that he would die due to the bug bites and the infections of the land. He was on the Isle of Patmos. He was in a situation for this one reason here. That's why the king sent him. But, but he didn't realize the reason why John made it through the boiling oil was for this, was for the word of God to come forth, for the testimony of Jesus. I want to encourage you today that maybe you felt like you was one of the beloved of God, but now you feel like you're on the Isle of Patmos. I want to let you know you are where you are for a reason. There's a reason why you are where you are. That may have been a broken road, but it's a road that's got you where you are and I believe God's got a plan for you right where you are and it's for this, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let's talk about that for a minute. John had to get a word of revelation that would release to us the book of revelation but the testimony of Jesus Christ is I've been through this but Jesus stayed with me. And maybe you ain't been on the Isle of Patmos, you just feel like you have. And maybe you hadn't been born in oil yet, but maybe you just feel like you have. And nobody else, maybe you do feel out there and all alone by yourself. And maybe you don't know what the word or the will of God is for your life right now. But I want to let you know, as long as you will let Jesus walk with you, he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never turn his back from you or turn away from you, but he will always be there closer than a brother, he said. I want to let you know, if you don't know the word of God for your life, if you don't know 
know the work of God or the will of God for your life. I want to let you know that the Son of God was sent for your life and that he has remained with you. If you didn't come for the word, you have come for a testimony. Somebody say, I'm going to have a story to tell after this. I'm going to have a story to tell. After all we've been through, after all we had to walk through, some of you to get even here today. You got a story on how you got to church, and it is for the testimony of Jesus Christ. John said, I'm here for the word of the Lord and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. But I want to empower you with something here before we go too much further. <clears throat> As John spoke, he did speak about the island of Patmos. He did speak about the reason why he was there with the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. But I need to intrigue you right here on verse 10. He says, I was in the spirit. I just need to let that fall on you. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. This is the day that the Lord had made. I need to let you know that every day is the Sabbath day these days. Every day that you need to do the will of. But the, the point that I want to make to you today, not so much is it what day of the week, but there was a day of the week, there was a time that he was with the Lord and he was in the spirit. John spoke of this often as we see in verse 12. We looked a couple of weeks ago. He said, I was caught up in the spirit of the Lord. And if we drop the ball anywhere in the church, I'll say this is one of them, is that we don't know how to get caught up in the spirit anymore. And I want to encourage you today that we need to get caught up in his spirit. We need to be caught up in his spirit to where we lay our stuff aside and we just focus on him. And then now you could say, well, preacher, you just want me to pray more. Well, I want you to read your Bible right here because here's a man who's been boiled in oil who was in a situation. Here's a man that was on the Isle of Patmos who was rejected, who was neglected. If depression set on anybody, it should have set on him. He was truly alone. He had no friends around him. He had no, no, no nobody to counsel him and tell him this and lead him that way. He was all by himself. He, if anybody was going to be anxious, it should have been John. But John didn't focus on that. He still found time to get caught up in the Spirit of God. He still found time to be able to get with the Lord. And I wanted to encourage you right there for just a moment is that we need to, even if we are on the Isle of Patmos, even if we are in the strenuous place of life, is that we take the time to get with him. Let's look at what comes out of being caught up in the Spirit. I, I wish you would as I speak, and I'm just going to tell you right now, um, yeah, I'm going to stop right here and tell you that th there was a, a monumental moment in this church this week. This week. Um, it was Tuesday night. Tuesday night we were here. Uh, my, my elders were here Tuesday morning, so they weren't here Tuesday night. I had, I had very few uh, pillars of leadership that were around me this Tuesday night. Um, but I, and I had some very young and inexperienced people around me not all but some I had I had a few warriors in the house or that were with me um, and and as I began to pray because it was prayer time it was time to get caught up in the spirit on Tuesday night and pray to the Lord and let him speak to us I called everybody right up here on the platform and I'm not sure we do it every Tuesday night but we did it this Tuesday night <clears throat> and I told the young people I told all those people around me I said listen as I pray the Lord's gonna give you a word not a word of prophecy that you're going to write a book from. Not necessarily are you going to take something and, you know, thus saith the Lord and go off like Brother Ray might or I might or carry on. But the Lord might just give you one word. And as time went around in the prayer circle, the Lord began to give words to people. And people would say something like this, just in case you thought you didn't fit that circle. They would say, Pastor, this don't make no sense at all to me. And they'd say a word. And from there, we would pray, and the Lord would open up that word right here in the right here on earth. He would open up the heavens, and we began to pray. We prayed for you. We prayed for your kids. We prayed for you being here today. There were several different ways that went forth just by taking the time to be caught up in his spirit and just saying, you know what? We just want to hear you make a download. And I want to encourage you that one of our biggest weaknesses in the church today is not that we don't have the speakers or we don't have the lights or we don't have the entertainment. It is that we don't take the time to get caught up in the spirit anymore and we just got to learn how to lay ourselves aside look break your schedule you ain't made that much money this year that you can do it without him I dare you to look at your calendar and see what you can open up during the day and say I can give this to the Lord huh I, some of y'all will give money quicker than you'll give time 
I, look, you, many preachers ain't going to say that because I ain't trying to mess up the tithe and offering around here. But I'll tell you one thing. If the tithe and offering never going to get better, it's because people took time to hear from God. Because if you don't take the time to hear from God, I probably ain't going to eat your money anyway. Oh, I'll take it. We'll figure it out. We'll pray a blessing over it. But I want to let you know, if you're not hearing from God, if you don't take the time and let him lead you and guide you, you probably won't give the right amount. Whether you give or all, that, that doesn't matter. What I'm asking for you first is to give him some time. If you give him time, the, the rest of the giving of your life won't be so hard, so dreadful. Give of the time. Take the time. <laughs> Can I say this? Take the time before you end up on the Isle of Patmos. Huh? I, I ain't even trying to preach hell and bring condemnation on you. I'm just saying here John is, he's in Patmos, he's taking the time. You want to know how before you get in a tight situation. Build that relationship before you need it, and you'll have it when you need it. Amen? Amen. So here, here's where he's saying, he said, listen, uh, I'm here for this. He said, I was in the spirit of the Lord on that day, and I heard behind me a loud voice, like a trumpet. Case in point. I just gave you an out by a testimony of what God has brought you through because you may not know the work or the will of God for your life. And you may not, and there's no problem with you not knowing. But I want to let you know the voice that's going to lead you gets louder when you take time to get caught up in the Spirit. John said, I'm sitting here in the presence of the Lord and I hear his voice like a trumpet behind me, giving me direction, giving me encouragement, giving me empowerment. Somebody ought to make some noise right here. You ever been in a dry season of your life that you act like you couldn't hear God? You could know what he was saying. You didn't know what he wanted to do. That's where confusion comes in. That's where division comes in. When we don't hear his voice. But John said, I was caught up in the spirit and while I'm caught up, I can hear him like a trumpet. Uh, he said, Patmos can't shout loud enough that I can't hear the voice behind me. I want to say this right now, that your situation can't get bad enough that you can't hear the voice of God if you will take the time. Depression's voice ain't big enough. Anxiety's not there. I declare the peace of the Lord can settle all the confusion of your life if we'll just take the time to get in the spirit of the Lord. Take your time. He said, it sounds like a trumpet behind me. I love the still, small voice. I understand Elijah's example when it wasn't in the fire and it wasn't in the wind, but it was in the still, small voice. But I like it when I know he said something. It takes faith to hear a still, small voice sometimes. But whenever he starts, whenever he starts putting signs and wonders all around you and you know that you know that you know there's no peace like that. There's nothing like knowing that he called me. It's one thing to kind of guess and wonder and go out on faith but when I heard him like a trumpet I can go out of here like a warrior. I can run out on the battlefield and know that I'm equipped because I know I have heard from him. Why? Because I've taken the time to be with him. We've got to take the time and uh, I know some of y'all's eyebrows raised a little bit when I said about going uh, into Revelations because you often, and we all often know what's in Revelation. That's the end of the book. That's the end of the story. That's all she wrote. <laughs> we think we something while we in the Gospels. That makes us feel good, you know, the grace of Jesus. And Paul comes through there to the Gentiles and say, you know what, grace covers you all. Uh, and I don't want to make light of it, none at all, but revelations when dragons start blowing fire and horses start trampling and armies start coming in, everybody gets a little bit worried. And that's okay to be fearful of the Lord and understand that we are not the strongest vessel out here these days. We need to understand that there is, the end times are coming. I've accepted this week that there's a great falling away from the churches. I, I Look, and I... I just go on and tell you, I'm not burdened to go get them and bring them back because the word of God says they're going to go away. This is what I said. Those who are for real are going to stay seated. Those who are rooted are going to stay where they're supposed to be. Those who are tossed around by wind and doctrine, they just here for the show anyway. They in the way. I'm looking for the real remnant of God. I'm looking for a revival of what's coming to be. I'm looking for the revelation of revival. Get the fake out of my way. I'm glad I got some help right there. 
Because I really feel like what's going to happen in those days as we get deeper into the book of Revelations, as we get deeper into understanding the end times and we see things happen, that the fake is going to burn up with the fire. And I'm going to need to know who, look, the best way to find pure gold is put it in a fire. And what's just shining is going to burn up. And what's real gold is going to get better. It's going to get more valuable. It'll be better to have 25 or 30 who's going to pray with me and we're going to make it through than to have 150 and we all burn up and go to hell because I tickled your ears. So I say things, stuff like we need to learn how to get in the spirit of the Lord so that we can understand his call for our life and where he wants us to be able to go. The end times are coming. There'll be a great falling away. I heard, a, I heard a pastor speak this this week, is that, you know what, I'm not going to be so concerned about the, the multitudes on the side of the mountain and trying to get them in the church, and my own family going to die and go to hell. And I challenge you that today. Don't be worried about the stranger. Work with your family. Work with your loved ones. Make sure that you're the lamb that's been sacrificed. If, if anybody's going to cry out and plead the blood, you make sure it's you crying out for your family. We've got to do that. Listen. I want to win all the cities around here. I want everybody to come to this church. I, I love to have church. I love to hear your voice when you sing and everybody get together. But most of all, I want to make sure everybody in the room is going to be with me in eternity. And if I ain't got the 25, 30, 50, 80 people in the room going with me, then I need not to be concerned about the surrounding cities. I need to get my house straight. That's for me. That's a word for me to be able to do that as a pastor. As, as John said, this is what with instruction came as the Lord stood behind him with a great voice, with what John compared to as a trumpet. Uh, he, he said, I heard the spirit of the Lord. Oh, he said, I was in the spirit of the Lord and behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. And, and, and Christ went on to say, I am the alpha and the omega. I'm the first and the last. And several instructions came behind there. And I'm not just skipping over. I'm just going by what the Lord's put on my heart to speak to you today. And that is verse 19. Verse 19, it says, write the things which you have seen. And the things which are and the things which will take place after this. I'm going to let you read that to yourself again as I get me a little shot of water. Pardon all the effects of the water bottle. Nine times out of ten, whenever the Lord speaks to us, he's called for us to do something. There's some responsibility for you. It's not going to be your responsibility to make righteousness. Christ did that. His righteousness makes us whole. I'm not saying you got to work yourself to heaven. But I am going to tell you, when he gives you instruction, there's accountability for you to be able to hold to. There's something that you will have to do. Not to impress him, but just so he knows that you're really going to be obedient. Because the last thing he needs to do is put you in a place that he can win his kingdom, and you're going to lay down to disobedience because it ain't comfortable to you right now. It don't fit your schedule right now. So he's got to check you out and say, look, I'm going to give you some assignments. I'm going to see what you're going to do. Are you just wanting to go to heaven or do you want to try to help me win somebody to go with you? Or are you going to help me fulfill the kingdom? Are you going to help me go out in the world and preach the gospel? Or are you just worried about, do, are you going to get past the pearly gates? So he has to give us assignments. So this is what I want to say to you, and this is very general, but I want to make sure you just start doing this. Uh, and I'm not going to age myself here at all, but he said, write this down. Write this down. Pastor, well, that's pretty simple. It, real simple. Real simple. So let's do it. Now, I, I said I'm going to age myself because there's gaps in this place because uh, some of these cats don't know nothing about writing no, writing no journal. They got places in their phones. And I'm okay with that. So wherever you can record it, that you can go back and reflect on it, write this down. Would you tell, just tell somebody next to you, you need to write this down. You need to start writing this down. You need to start writing this down. Now, none of you knew what we're going to write down. That's all right. I got your communication going, and you're going, we, we need to get our pens ready, get our thumbs ready, ever how we're going to record it. We need to get it written down. What are we going to write down, Ray? Well, I'm glad you asked. We can go on and talk about it uh, before we wrap this thing up today. He said, write this down. Write, write down what you have seen. Sometimes in our walk with life, and I'll teach this another day, sometimes in our walk with life, God will just put a stop on us. Everybody ever been stopped by God? Everything just going on along pretty good, you know, you just kind of Cadillac and cruise, and all of a sudden, wham, you hit a wall. Happens to me too, <laughs> promise you. Usually has something to do with an elder. <laughs> 
They keep me balanced. This young preacher will run off and just do something crazy. And they're like, well, well let's, let's, look, let's look at this. Let's look at this. And I'm like, God, I thought. But whenever God calls for you to stop, he wants you to look around. He wants you to look around. He wants you to look back and, be, and remember what you've been through. He wants you to, uh, he wants you to look up because from him comes our strength. Stop. He wants you to look down. That shows your compassion to look and at things around you and being concerned to things that you may be above or over. And he also wants you to look forward. We'll talk about some of that. But can I tell you, you don't need to do all that while you're walking. You need to do that while you stopped. Because you don't need to be looking backwards and walking. So when God gives you the go-ahead, go ahead and walk. Look forward. But if he's got you stopped, write this down. He said, look back at the things that you have seen. I know Jesus has wiped away your past. I know the blood of Jesus has to taken our stony, black, cold heart, give us a heart of flesh, washed it in red blood, and made us white. Somebody ought to bless the Lord for the righteousness of Jesus. What he has done, if it had not been for the blood. But you need to write down some things that the Lord did for you. You're going to need to look back and remember. Now, you don't need to ponder on all of your life, but you need to take some of your life while you stopped, while you still for just a moment, maybe while you're in the spirit of the Lord, while you're just resting there and you hear from the trumpet of the, the vows of the Lord. Just take for a minute and look back and see what the Lord has done. Some of y'all ought to be getting happy right now. Listen, the, end, the reminder of your past is not always a dark place. That's just where you were, but you're not there anymore. You, th that's where you was, but it's not who you are. It's where you came from, but you are not created to be there. You need to look back and write this down and say what the Lord, write down in detail. The devil had detail in your life. You know how much stuff you did? Huh? You, knew how, you know how long it took you to drink a six-pack, smoke a pack? Anyway, I feel like your wheels are turning. You, you, you know how many women you womanized? You know how many prostitutes you picked up? It's quiet in the church now. You know how many times you gossiped? You know what you said down at the hair salon? Just while I was there, I figured I'd equal the balance, balance of scales. We know what we've been through. But the, look, can I tell you that Jesus wants to wash that away and has washed it away, but the enemy wants you to forget it. It is as far as the east is from the west, and God might not look on it and see you anymore, but I think it's due, your, your due diligence to look back every now and then and say, how did I get here if it weren't for the blood of Jesus? Look what the Lord has done. You ought to just tell the devil, I've come to remind you what he brought me out of. Remember when I used to go in that house? You're going to drive by some of them houses. I want you just to remind the devil. Remember when you had me bound up in there? Remember when you wouldn't let me out? Remember when I spent three days and a weekend in there? You wouldn't let me out? I'm out, sucker. Look what the Lord has done, and I'm about to write it down. Somebody write it down. You ought to write it down. Just so that sucker every time he makes you think something else, you can bring him to the book and say, look where it is written. I was caught up in the spirit and I wrote this. I remember when I was bound, but now I'm free. I remember when I was tainted, but now I'm made whole. Where the Lord done brought us from. He said, write it down, look back, take a look at the things that you have seen and write that down. He said, I want you to look around and see what's going on right now. I want you to write that down. What's going on around you right now? Ha. Huh. Let's look at this for a minute. While you was all shouting, don't lose your shout right here. It's easy for the Lord to have delivered us from a lot. And we come in here on these comfortable chairs and we don't do nothing. So I need you to write this down. What are you doing now? Where he done all that for you. Now what are you doing for him? It is quiet in the house. It is. I'm so glad you noticed that, brother. 
What, what are you doing now? What, what's going on? What book are you reading? How are you making investment in your mind? How much time have you taken to thank him for what he did there? Now, you 20, 30 years run wild and rampant. He run into all that mess and he raced it in about two weeks. He had to work with your mind and get you right. But he done a great thing. And then now we're going to sit in the church for 15, 20 years and not do nothing. What's going on right now? Write them on two separate pages so we can, you know, they don't run together. And we can compare how much the Lord has done for you and how much you are doing for the Lord. I'm not, I'm not into, to, you know, big competitions around here. I don't, I don't want you to share your list with somebody, but I want you to write it down. Because just like you told the enemy, come, write, come here, I wrote this down. I want you to pass by that list of right now. And I want you to look and see what's written. See how much is written. Oh, it gets tight. And that's all right. That's, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. It's a very sobering thought to understand and look and say, all right, the Lord delivered me from this. And this is what I've done is I got a job and went to work. Hmm? I, I got a, and hey, look, that's good. But you off sometime. Now, uh, I, boy, I didn't bring, bring no condemnation. This must be conviction falling in the house today. It's how much free time do you have? And you know what? I might can't put it on you to say, hey, go ahead and do something right now. I want you to take your free time and just write it down. Let's do that first. Just, just make a list. What, what's going on on my day off? What am I going to do? Can I tell you this? That... Maybe not in the, the first five years of your deliverance, but if that's still going on in that house down there, maybe you sent back to go knock on the door. Maybe, maybe you got some friends that's got delivered out of that house, and they don't do that anymore, but they're not doing exactly what you're doing. I was just wondering if you love them enough to let them join the abundant life that God's put you in. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just challenging you right now. I know it's, 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 it's a challenge it's for us. What, what are we doing? And, Je and he told John, I brought you here. Write down what you have seen. Write down what you see now. But he did say there's hope there. Write down the things you're going to see afterwards. <laughs> hey, we need to understand that, that we are not a people. A lot of times we allow our present and even our future to be shaped by our past experiences yeah that's humanity that's what we do that's how we learn not to touch a hot stove why we touched it before that sucker burn us hey we had an experience and from now on from here forward we're not touching that stove that's that's pretty that's, that's elementary right there so so we learn by our nature of humanity uh, by our experiences so I, i'm not going to completely come against that but i want to say this is that um that that there there can be some things that happen in your future that are not necessarily shaped by your past huh? I, I want you to come up on that road and stop and look back and write what the lord has done i want you to look around you and see what the lord is doing or what you are doing for the lord right now but i also need you to be able to look forward and see what god can do with you now, what you cannot do, you cannot look back and say, well, I did this back here. I'm not going to be able to do it up there. Not the same thing, but you can't say this experience is going to hinder for what I'm going to do. It may, maybe I can't right now. Can, can I say this? Sister Mallory is one. Got to work every other Sunday. We got, we got several people who a couple years ago wasn't working at all, wasn't, wasn't doing anything. The Lord's done some things. You've been part, a part of that in your life to where there were some times that you couldn't make it because you had to work, but there were some times you couldn't even get a job. You couldn't hold a job. You couldn't keep a job. There's going to be seasons that we have to walk through in life, but I want to come to let you know that we need to be prophetic enough to be able to say this right here, is that I can see God can do more in the front of me than what the enemy say. It can't happen behind me. we got to learn how to write down what's coming in our life. I want you to look at what's behind you. Be aware of what's around you, but I want you to expect what's in the front of you. I want you to prophesy what your life is going to look like. Write that down right there. We've got to be a people who are prophetic. If we're going to be made in the image of God, we've got to be able to speak out into the things that are not now, but as though they can be. 
Mark 11 says, speak to the mountain and the mountains move. There's authority in your voice. There's authority in your faith. If you would just hold on to it. I've got to preach to a people that are not so caught up in their past that they can't be anything right now, but that they can look toward their future and press on from here. We've got to learn to be more prophetic in, in what we do and where we go. What you have seen in your past, the things which are in your present, and write down the things that's coming after this. Christ said, I'm fixing to unveil some stuff to you. To your credit, to your credit, as I get ready to wrap up here today, I'll give you this. Is that you know what you walk through. You know what you're in right now. But you don't know what tomorrow holds. And I'm not going to what if you die tonight. That's not what I'm going. What I'm saying is, is I need you to understand that God's literally called us to be three-dimensional. I need you to be able to look back there and remember and let it build you. I need you to look around so that you can be aware. But I need you to have an open mind that God from here can do anything with you. God, if he could get you as far as he has in the past 10, 15 years of your life to where you are this morning, what could he do with the next 10 or 15 years of your life? What can, we, what can he do? What can he do? Look around and think about Write that down. What can he do? Huh? I mean, look, I, I'll go back to my simple experience. Uh, the Indians knew what was around them, but the pilgrims could see the, the potential in the land. The, the pilgrims could see how much, how much was left to go do. But there was no time to say, well, they got people here. Let's go somewhere else. They was willing to come together and not run away from each other, not avoid each other, but come together and work together and see what we can do. Listen, there's no time for you to run away just because a little opposition is sitting across the table from you. If you would write it down, put it on the table, and slide the document across the table and say, listen, there's potential in what we can do next if we would just press forward and go and do it. I want to encourage you today that the future for you is brighter than your past. You know that's my story for you all the time. As a minister of the gospel, as long as you don't mind doing what Christ has asked you to do and expecting him to be your savior, your, your future looks very promising. Promise you that. And if it don't, we could change that today. Because the word of God says all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you can be saved. That could change today. But in your mind, I've got to get you to make a couple of lists. Make a list of what God's done before. Make a list of what he's doing now. And can you make a list of what you expect him to do next? And if you can't make that list, that's okay. Worship team, come on forward. It's okay if you can't make that third list right now. Preacher, what you saying? You just got off a big rant. It all comes back. I'm going to let them get in place. The word of God always returns. He said, my word will not return void, but it will accomplish what I have sent it to do. And the Lord has released the word inside of you. As they begin playing, why don't you stand to your feet as I speak this last little bit to you. Help me out there. Father, I thank you for every individual here, God. As I wrap up this message, I pray you open the hearts. Open the hearts, God. Open our hearts, our hearts, Lord. Open our minds. God, we give you the praise and the honor and glory for all that you have done for us, what you brought us through. We give you the praise. Anybody in the room can look back and say what they've been through. Anybody in the room can look around and say, this is where I am. But if you seem to have a short list of what's next, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard him like a trumpet. And I want to release that to you today. I believe there's going to be an open cry from the Lord for you as you make time to get in his spirit. I told you I would give you the opportunity. If you need to give your life to Jesus and you haven't before or you need to rededicate or recommit your life, be sure to let me know. I want to lead you there. But the rest of this altar, 
may say, Lord, I just hadn't been hearing you and I want to give you a little time. Changing your place, changing your position. If you keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same results. Don't expect anything different. But if you expect something different, do something different. At the altar, authorizations are made. That's where he changes things for us. And I want to welcome you to the altar. And just take a few moments in his spirit. As they sing, it's not for entertainment. It's just for you to have a time in his presence, a time in his spirit. Would you come? Would you come and just let the Lord move the way he needs to? Holy Spirit, move in this place. Respond to the people as the people respond to you, Holy Spirit. If you're moving forward, move forward. Take a step. Move, Holy Spirit. Make your way.